Today, I'm going to give you eight reasons why you should buy the M2 Mac Mini for school and two reasons why you shouldn't. Also, thank you to Best Buy for sponsoring a portion of this video. So starting out at number one, we have size. Whether you're in a dorm room or a small apartment, you most likely don't have too much space and it's great to have this little tiny Mac Mini instead of a huge computer tower. If it's flat on a desk, it has a super small footprint. There are also vertical stands that you could use if you wanna save more space and even wall and under desk mounts if that works better for you. And I'll put some links in a description for you. At number two, we have connectivity. So starting out with the ports, you're getting two Thunderbolt 4 ports and two USB-A ports. And this way you can connect both types of accessories without needing adapters. Now Thunderbolt 4 ports are super capable and they're a great option for fast external SSDs and very powerful displays. And the USB-A ports are super convenient to have for less demanding accessories. You're also getting an HDMI port, which is great if that's all your monitor supports and there's a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack in case you prefer to use wired headphones. Now, if you need even more Thunderbolt ports, you can upgrade to the M2 Pro, and then you'll have four Thunderbolt ports in the back. And if you want more convenient access to ports on the front, and you wanna add an SDXE card reader, you can pick up a hub that fits perfectly under your M2 Mac Mini. Now, one last thing that I wanna mention is that if your school offers a 10 gigabit connection, you can upgrade the ethernet port for a hundred bucks. And that brings me to the third reason you should buy an M2 Mac Mini for school, the price. If you compare it to the older M1 model, Apple actually reduced the price of the M2 Mac Mini by a hundred bucks, and it now starts out at $599, at least for the average user. But with the student discount, you can actually get it for $499. In any case, you can use some of that money to upgrade the internal storage or the unified memory, which we'll get to in a minute. All right, so the price is good, but what about performance? Well, that's reason number four, and there's actually two versions of the Mac Mini, the M2 and the M2 Pro. Now, I already talked about the additional ports that you get with the M2 Pro, but let's quickly cover the difference in terms of performance to see which one you should get. The regular M2 comes with four high performance cores and four high efficiency cores. And with the M2 Pro, you can add either two or four additional high performance cores. The regular M2 comes with a 10 core GPU and the M2 Pro can almost double that with up to 19 cores. The regular M2 can be configured with up to 24 gigabytes of unified memory and the M2 Pro can go all the way up to 32 gigabytes. And then finally, the M2 Pro has double the memory bandwidth of the M2, but what does this actually mean to a typical student? The overwhelming majority of students should just get the regular M2 and should seriously consider upgrading to 16 gigabytes of unified memory. This way you get better performance with more resource intensive apps or when you're working with multiple apps at the same time. If you wanna take this one step further and get 24 gigabytes of unified memory, you'll never regret more than you need at this time. Now, if you're working with 3D, if you're editing large batches in Lightroom or Photoshop, shop or if you're editing very challenging or high res video with a lot of motion graphics or anything else that would benefit from improved GPU performance, then you should consider the M2 Pro. Now, one other factor to consider here is that the M2 can be configured with up to two terabytes of internal storage, then the M2 Pro can go all the way up to eight terabytes. That actually brings me to one of the reasons why you may not want an M2 Mac Mini, which is that it's not upgradable. And this is true for any of the new Silicon Macs or MacBooks because the unified memory and the storage are part of the chip. Now, this may makes it super efficient and extremely powerful, but there's no way to swap out components. So you can't buy a Mac mini with eight gigabytes of unified memory and then add more later, and you can't add additional internal storage either. When it comes to storage, I typically get as much as I think I'll need, and then I supplement it with external SSDs, which I can share between all of my devices. With unified memory, make sure that you get as much as you think you'll need for the life of the device, again, because there's no way to upgrade it later. But there is a solution to that, and that brings me to today's sponsor, Best Buy, and their Upgrade Plus program. Now, if you're not familiar with Upgrade Plus, it's a great option for students because it's an affordable way to get your favorite Mac today, 
pay for it over time, and then have the option of upgrading to a new model after 36 months. This way you can choose the right Mac for you and configure it with the specs that you need and can afford. It's super easy to apply to Upgrade Plus and you get a low monthly payment. The exact amount depends on which Mac or MacBook you choose. Then you have a couple of options at the end. If your needs have changed and maybe you need more memory or you need more storage, you can turn in your qualifying Mac or MacBook at any best Buy store location and then upgrade to a newer version, at which point Best Buy will make the final payment for you. If you're happy with what you got, you can just choose to keep it or you can just turn it in and then again, Best Buy will make the final payment for you. So if you're ready to get your new Mac or MacBook today, make things easier on yourself and check out Best Buy's Upgrade Plus program. And thank you to Best Buy for sponsoring this portion of the video. Now, reason number five for getting an M2 Mac mini is Sidecar. If you don't know what Sidecar is, it's a way to use your iPad as an additional display for your Mac or MacBook. So whether you have a single, dual, or even triple display setup, like what you can can do with the M2 Pro, you can always add one additional display with your iPad. It's super easy to set up and you can easily drag windows from your main display onto your iPad. And if you want to learn more about that, I'll put a link to this video in the description. Now, another great way to combine multiple Apple products is reason number six universal control. This is different from Sidecar in that you can use a single mouse and keyboard to control up to three Apple devices. So for example, if you have a Mac mini, a MacBook, and an iPad, you can have all three of them on your desk and then you can use any of the keyboards, mice, or trackpads to control all three devices. You could do things like drag and drop files between devices and a lot of other super convenient things. So if you're interested, I also have a dedicated video about that feature. And this brings me to reason number seven, the Apple ecosystem. Now, if you own multiple Apple devices like an iPhone, an iPad, or an Apple Watch, they all work so well together. So you could do things like read and reply to text messages from your Mac or your mobile devices. You can copy text or a link from one device and paste it in another. You can airdrop files and photos and your everyday interactions with various productivity apps are really seamless. I have to admit that this was something that personally I initially undervalued. And I only really understood the benefits once I added a Mac to my setup. And now we get to reason number eight for getting an M2 Mac mini for school. And then one more reason why you may want to look at another option. So this might sound a little funny, but one of the reasons to get the M2 Mac mini is that it doesn't come with any accessories. And you might be thinking, how is that a reason to get something? Well, I like to choose my own accessories. Like maybe my current desk in my room is small and I only have room for a 24 inch monitor. So I could get something like the iMac, but then what if two years from now I have more room and now I can fit a 32 inch monitor but now I'm stuck. Or maybe I want an ultra wide monitor because I work with a lot of apps at the same time. For keyboards, I'm pretty much never going to use the keyboard that comes with a computer because I prefer mechanical keyboards and I'd rather choose the type of switches that sound and feel the best to me. And as far as a mouse, I'm on my computer so much that I'm definitely going to upgrade to a more ergonomic option. So all in all, I'd rather not pay for accessories that I don't plan on using. Now, there's one more reason why the M2 Mac mini may not be the best option for you and why you might want to look in another direction, and that's portability. Sure, it's going to be more expensive to get a MacBook, but something like the M2 MacBook Air or the MacBook Pro or even the M1 MacBook Air, those are all great options. You're going to get a lot of the same benefits that the M2 Mac mini gives you, but in very light and portable devices and with excellent battery life. Now you should see this comparison between the M2 MacBook Air and M2 MacBook Pro, or check out why the cheaper M1 MacBook Air is still a great option. Click on my face to subscribe. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.